Hey guys, what's going on and welcome to the second part of the series where I go through and rate every single card from the new set in Legends of Runeterra, the Rising Tide set. Uh, if you haven't watched it yet, I highly recommend going and checking out part one. This part is part two where I will go through all the other regions that are not named Bilgewater because that is what I did in part one. Uh, so for those of you who didn't watch part one or haven't watched any of my other rating videos, a quick overview. The rating system is a simple five-star rating system. Zero means the card is utter trash and probably completely unplayable. While five stars means the card is great and you should probably play this card. Uh, also, these are these ratings are for predominantly constructed. I'm mostly going to be talking about a card and its constructed ramifications and how it does in constructed. I might talk a little bit about the card in expedition but mostly i'm going to just talk about the constructed playability of a card anyway though let's get into the ratings our first region we're going to be looking at i believe will be demacia and we're going to be starting off with blinding assault blinding assault is first off the champion spell of the demacia champion the new demacia champion quinn it is a 2-mana slow spell that says Summon Valor. Now, Valor is a 2-mana, two 2-1 two Challenger Scout. Again, Scout, if you don't remember, says that if a unit with Scout attacks and all the units attacking with Scout are the only units attacking, you basically get another combat phase. You get another combat token. Rally, in other words. So, this card... Immediately, I think I look at this card and I think about uh, Fleet Feather Tracker. I'm like, okay, Fleet Feather Tracker is a pretty much a one mana two one variant of this card. No scout, and you got to do a little extra work for Challenger. I'd rather just play Fleet Feather. You get the curve of Fleet Feather into War Chefs, which is really really strong. Uh, maybe you'll play this if you want a fourth copy of Fleet Feather. I guess. Um, also, I guess maybe in like some weird Demacia spells deck that wants a two mana two one challenger scout. I don't really think a deck like that exists at the moment and it's going to be kind of hard for that deck to exist. It's kind of cute with um, Karma out. So it's like two mana, you get two two ones with challenger and scout. That's cute. I've had that happen a little bit when I've generated this card randomly with Karma. So, in my honest opinion, the card's not that good, but in very niche scenarios, I can see it being played. So I'm going to give it two stars, because a two mana, two one challenger scout is not amazing, but it's serviceable if you really need some help. The thing is, Demacia just has so much competition for the early game cards that it's like between this, War Chefs, and like Bright Steel Protector, can you really fit in your deck? Now, granted, of course, spell mana is also a thing. Anyway. Next up, we got Converted Strike. Five mana, fast spell. That's nice. Uh, choose an enemy, two allies, strike it. Now, right away you might think, well, this kind of just is single combat, but worse, right? Well, they're striking here, not actually fighting like single combat, so your allies aren't actually taking damage. Um, second off, it's just like, it's still good. Like, whatever you're targeting is probably going to die because two things... Like, just, let's say, just say they're both 3-3s. Three That's 6 damage. 5 mana deal 6 is fairly okay. Now, granted, since it's a fast spell, not a burst spell, your opponent can just kill whatever you're using to strike their stuff. Like, oh, you're using a 3-3 three three and a 3-3 three three to strike my 5-5 five five or something? I'll kill one of your 3-3s, three three, so it only deal, it's a 5 mana deal 3, basically. So, because of that, and because single combat still exists, and single combat's 2 mana, while well, this is 5, and 5 is kind of a lot of mana especially for Demacia who tries to be fairly efficient with its mana especially early on and is like it rather would just play like very cheap combat tricks and just cheap kill spells or whatever in the early game I mean I still think this card is playable and fine I think like most of the time you're going to play this because you can't play more single combats maybe sometimes you'll do a 2-2 split of like two single combats and two strikes but I prefer single combat like nine times out of ten when I play Demacia. So I'm going to give it two stars. It's playable and 
I think you shouldn't... If you see it, you shouldn't be too surprised because it's a strong card. It's just single combat exists. Now, next up, we got Genevieve Elmhart. Six mana, four, four. Challenger, Scout. Uh, when she's summoned, give other allies plus one, plus one this round. I am not a big fan of this card. You might think to yourself, well, what if I'm in a Scout deck with, like, the new Champion Quinn, who we'll see later on. Uh, the issue with that, I feel, is this card is six mana. You know who also is six mana? Scythria. Most of the time, I'd rather just play Scythria over this card. Sure, this thing has Scout and Challenger, so it's not necessarily worse than Scythria, because you're also getting the plus one, plus one. But remember, Scythria gives plus one, plus one, and Fearsome. The Fearsome is a big, big part of why I really like Scythria over Genevieve makes it uh, hard to block and you know just overall I kind of prefer Scythria most of the time over Genevieve now in a dedicated scout deck I'd say maybe this card is a little bit better because it helps you push more damage in by scouting more and getting bigger combat phases with scouts so I think it's playable still I'm only going to give this thing two stars she's fine and in scout decks she's fine but again even in scout decks, I kind of prefer Scythria. So, yeah, two stars. Playable, but not amazing. Next up, though, we got Great Horn Companion. Not much to talk about with this guy. Five mana, four, five scout. Nothing special about this guy. Uh, even for a scout deck, this guy is trash. Quinn is also five mana. Just play Quinn. Uh, just play something like Garen instead of this guy if you really need more five drops. But just play like Radiant Guardian. Uh, the 5-4 Challenger, whatever. There's so many 5-drops you can play over this guy. Uh, Greyhorn Companion is, in my opinion, and I'm pretty sure in everyone's opinion who plays this game, predominantly meant for Expedition. Zero stars for Constructed. In Expedition, and he's fairly good, I think. 5-mana, 4-5 Scout. Like, I'll play a 4-mana, four 4-5 four in Expedition, so for one more mana, I get Scout. Sounds great. Uh, but for Constructed, yeah, this guy shouldn't be seeing play. Unless you are playing against an obviously newer player who's playing a budget deck or just a bad player in general. Next up, we got Green Fang Warden. Three mana, two, two, barrier, scout. Uh, I don't think even the scout decks want this guy. Uh, the problem is stats are a little low. Uh, barrier is nice, obviously, but can you really do anything with the barrier. I guess it lets you attack in when your opponent has like a 3-3 three, three or something on the board and you're like, all right, I'll attack in. You want to basically just take two damage to pop a barrier? I mean, like, it's fine, but I really am not impressed by this card. It's an all, it's also an elite. I'll say that. Like, don't forget that. Uh, the elite tag is kind of important with something like um, just various elite cards in the first place, like various elite synergy, like uh, Battlesmith, the two mana two two, I believe, if I remember my stats correctly. Uh, whenever you summon a league, it's plus one plus one. Like if this guy becomes a three mana three three with Scout and Barrier, that's pretty good. But still, um, I think Scout decks don't want this guy. Elite decks don't want this guy, and Elite decks are really just Demacia Bannerman mid decks anyway. So because of all that, I'll give this guy one star. Maybe if a Barrier matters deck comes around maybe this guy will see play but it's not great okay budget card and i couldn't fault you for playing this in a scout matters deck even though it's not a great scout card because things like at the three mana slot in a scout deck i'd rather play like fiora or i don't know misfortune or badger bears which we'll see the badger bear later too oh trust me next up well hey there's the badger bear and we're gonna talk about him also later too we got the Grizzled Ranger next up. Now, this guy is, in my opinion, one of the strongest cards from the set. Four mana, four one scout. Last breath, summon a Loyal Badger Bear. As you can see here on the left, Loyal Badger Bear is a three mana, four four. That's a lot of stats for four mana. Four one scout and then a four four. So this guy comes down on turn four, attacks in by himself or with other scouts. That's four damage already. Gets to attack in again because of scout. That's eight damage for four mana. That's huge. Let's say your opponent is like, okay, I'll use like, um, you're attacking in with this guy. Okay, let me vile feast. Sure. Congratulations. You vile feasted and killed him. Now, can you deal with the four, four and the extra attack? 
This is uh, one of the reasons why Demacia is really good at the moment. Uh, so, I feel like uh, it should be easy to rate, to guess what I'm going to rate this guy with how much I'm praising this guy. Easy, five stars. He is the nuts. I've seen him in pretty much any Demacia deck. I've seen him in Demacia control with something like Lux. I've seen him in obviously Demacia mid, like Bannerman stuff. Guy is just crazy good, crazy value. You will hate him if you're playing against Demacia. You'll love him if you're playing Demacia. Now, next up, we got the Badger Bear itself. Don't need to talk too much about this guy because we've already seen him and kind of talked about him with the Ranger. If you weren't getting enough Badger Bear before with the Ranger alone, you can play Badger Bear by itself. All he is is a three mana four four. That's it. No other text. No like tribe. He's not like an elite or anything. It's just a three mana four four. You know what? That's good enough. Most three drops, I think, are between like four threes and three threes and even three fours. Like there are, or yeah, for three drops. Sorry, I was thinking about like maybe there's a four or five, but then I was thinking about four drops, whatever. Uh, a three mana four four is really good because it just stonewalls your opponent and it lets you start to put pressure on too because the Nexus starts at 20 life. Just five attacks from a Badger Bear will just kill you. Uh, also with Boom Crew Rookie... Noxus Burn, Draven Burn, whatever you want to call it being popular. Badger Bear blocks the Boom Crew Rookie fairly cleanly. Like sometimes your opponent will attack in to your like 2-2s, two 2-3s, twos, two whatever with their Boom Crew Rookies. And it's like, sure, I don't have any way to kill that even if you block, but I want to squeeze in that 2 damage. They attack in a Badger Bear, you block with Badger Bear, and they're like, well, there goes the Boom Crew Rookie. So, card's great. I honestly think this card is good at the moment only because of the smaller card pool right now in the game because we've only had like a set and a half i'm really just gonna call this like a half set because it's only around 120 cards compared to the first set which was like 600 cards i feel like this card will eventually get power crept out by other things in the three mana slot that actually do stuff besides just be vanilla three mana four fours however at the moment the card is really good i'm actually going to give it four stars that's how good i think the card is and how impressed i've been by this guy Next up, we got Quinn. I've talked about her a little bit in previous cards. She is the champion for Demacia. All the regions got a champion, a new champion. Obviously, Bilgewater got more because they're the new region. But all the currently, all the regions currently in the game got, got one champion. Demacia got Quinn. Quinn is pretty good. Five mana, three, four scout. When she is summoned, she summoned or summoned a Valor as well. We already know what Valor is. Two mana, two one challenger scout as well. Pretty good. Uh, she is fighting for the uh, five drop slot with Garen. And in scout decks, you're going to play her over Garen, I'd say. In Demacia mid decks, I know some people think Garen's better. Some people like Quinn. Also, her leveled up form is a four five with scout. And whenever she attacks, you get a summon. She summons Valor who challenges the strongest enemy to level her up, she needs to have seen you attack four times. If you've attacked in four times with while well, Quinn is on the field, you're probably winning the game already. Uh, also, her champion spell is Blinding Assault, the two-mana slow spell Summon Valor. We've seen it already, talked about it. Overall, she's pretty good. Very nice on curve in a scout deck. About the same power level as Garen, I would say. Valor is great. Scout's good. Scout's a really good mechanic, really powerful. Demacia is good. I would give her four stars. The reason not five stars is because she's a little lacking in terms of versatility, really. So just four stars for me. Still, though, really, really strong, really powerful. Uh, you will like her if you play her. Next up, we got Ranger's Resolve. Now, this one, I think I might be rating it a little too high, but that's because I hate this card, in all honesty, as a control player. Ranger's Resolve is a one mana burst spell, so you can't do anything in response to it. Uh, give allies tough this round. Immediately, my brain thinks about uh, chain, uh, chain Vest. And I'm like, okay, Chain Vest is also a one mana burst spell. Give an ally tough, but permanently. Uh, I think... They, I don't think they really compete too hard because you want to put chain vest on things like fiora while well, resolve is more of a demacia mid bannerman thing when you have a wide board i hate this card this card is great it count it basically is a one mana counter spell against some cards like 
Withering Whales, Vile Feast. Uh, it's a decent combat trick. Your opponent tries to get some good combat and good trades in by blocking your 4-4 four, four with your, their 4-1 or something. You play this and their 4-1 only deals 3-1 and your 4-4 four, four lives as a 4-1, something like that. And it just is good. It also like kind of like there's a lot of pings too with things like withering whale vile feast static shock messes with some math as well from things like avalanche and grasp and so on and so forth card is really good really versatile problem is sometimes it just doesn't do anything because it's asking you to have a board uh and sometimes your opponent just doesn't play things that care about this so i'm only gonna give this thing four stars because sometimes it's just not good enough Honestly, like, I could see myself even bringing this down to three or even two stars. Because it is a very meta-dependent card, but it's so powerful. One mana, and it does all that. Love the card. Well, I hate the card because I'm usually the one who's seeing it played against. And I hate seeing this card. But that should tell you just how strong the card is because it's making me hate it that much. Next up, though, we got another card that I am so confused about. Unyielding Spirit. Eight mana, burst spell. Love burst spell cards. Grant an ally. I can't take damage or die. Very powerful effect. Extremely powerful. The problem is eight mana is a lot of mana. At first, when I first saw the card, I was like, this is an unplayable meme. You can't play this card. Eight mana is way too much for that ability. And then I started to play against it more and more because some people were playing it because it's a fairly unique card. And the more and more I played against it, and then I even started playing it myself, I was like, okay, the card's not unplayable mean garbage but it's not it's still not like amazing now the problem is like you give something can't take damage or die uh hello will of ionia that's terrifying also uh devourer of the depths from bilgewater obliterate deals with this uh bounce effects in general steel effects uh some, but a lot of those cards and those effects aren't even being played. Like, uh, Riptide from Bilgewater also deals with this, I believe, if you have Nautilus on board. Still, though, you put some... I think the deck, or the card is playable in the right deck. In, like, a Fiora deck or maybe in a Lux deck. You put this on Lux, you pretty much have unending near-infinite final sparks. And Lux isn't going to die, of course. Put it on something like a Radiant Guardian, that means it's a 5-5 life stealer that can't die that's great i'm gonna give this thing two stars in all honesty i know some people think this thing is probably worth z or is a zero star card because like i still am of the opinion this is still mostly a meme card but it's just super strong and there are decks in the meta that just can't really deal with a card like this also put this thing on fiora Ew, that's a little scary uh some people are like what about purify just purify the unyielding spirit off. That's when you put it on a Fiora or a champion in general. So, a little scary of a card. Like, I've played a lot of Karina Control. Karina Control kind of struggles with this. When you play this on something in Karina Control, or when you're playing... When you're playing against Karina Control and you play this on something, Karina Control's game plan basically turns into a burnout game plan with Ladros and stuff, because they'll have a blocker for your Ladros, and... If it's on like a Radiant Guardian, they can always just keep gaining life. Or if it's on Fiora, be careful because they're going to just kill all your spiders. If it's on Lux uh, or something else like Karma, uh, that's just insane value. Anyway, that's the last card for Demacia. Let's get to the next region, which I believe is Freljord. And well, with the first card, we got a freaking meme here, boys. Aurora Porealis. 7 mana, burst spell. Create 2 random Poros from any region and 2 Poro snacks. If you don't remember, Poro snack is a 3 mana. It's been buffed. It used to cost 4. 3 mana, burst spell. Grant Poro allies everywhere, plus 1, plus 1. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, all you Poro lovers out there. This is not it. This is not the card to bring Poros to tier 1. I think this card is a meme. Um, and you should never even step foot close to constructed i mean just think about it it's a seven mana spell that doesn't do anything it just it's a i mean like you can think of it like a seven mana draw for but it's not drawing from your deck eh and then you actually have to cast the other spells like you have to cast the poro snack so that's another 
three mana each. So that's 13 mana for the Aurora itself and the two snacks. And then you have to actually play Poros too. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of mana. So outside of Mimi Poro decks and Expedition, in Expedition, I think this card is actually pretty good. Uh, you should not see this card in Constructed. I'm going to give this thing zero stars for Constructed playability. Poros are cute. I'm sorry, but this is not good enough for Constructed. Next up, we got Caught in the Cold. Two mana slow spell. Give an enemy unit Frostbite and Vulnerable this round. If you don't remember what Vulnerable is, basically it's like Reverse Challenger. A creature with Vulnerable on it can be challenged by any of your units. Uh, I'm not a fan of this card. I, in terms of challenging stuff, vulnerable stuff, I'd rather just play challengers. Uh, and I believe there's just better ways to give something vulnerable if you care about that. In terms of Frostbite, a slow Frostbite spell just is kind of bad. You have things like Brittle Steel if you want to be fast with your Frostbite spells. So you're not really using it as a combat trick. So it's going to basically be like mediocre removal is how you're how I look at this card and I feel like Freljord has okay removal and usually they pair up with another their removal is not great but usually they pair up with another faction another region whose removal is good enough to shore up their uh holes in terms of removal like Shadow Isles or Piltover and Zahn or Noxus or something so because of that, I'm going to give this thing one star. I It's like, it's not unplayable. I think maybe like some weird, like Freljord Ezreal deck couldn't play this. But even then it's like, it's eh. Like, I think that's pretty much the only deck that might play that is Freljord built over and Zon with Ezreal because it does target. It ticks up the Ezreal counter. But yeah, one star from me. It's not that impressive. Next up, we got Ember Maiden. A little wild pyromancer from Hearthstone. Uh, you look like a waifu now. First off, I am I've gone back and forth on this card. At first I thought this card wasn't that good. Now I think it's she's pretty playable. Three mana three two. Round start. Deal one to everything. Include that is including the Nexus, so it's hitting face. That means she's activating things like Swain, Sejuani. We haven't seen either of them. Uh Gangplank. Also activates Plunder. That is really, really good. Also helps clean up things like spiders. Now she's hitting herself too, so eventually she will die. Unless, of course, you're healing her or using things like uh, Elixirs of Iron or whatever. Still, though, I like the card. Um, activating Plunder is pretty nice without having to actually initiate combat. So you can play like have an Ember Maiden out, Ember Maiden pings your opponent's Nexus, and then you play something like Riptide Rex, and then you can swing in with Riptide Rex. That's crazy good. Still though, um, not the greatest card. I think she has her homes. I'm giving her only two stars though, because your opponent does get a little bit of time to react to her. And then if they actually do react to her and are able to prepare for the basically mass ping it's like okay cool you played a three mana three two that's not that good still though i think she's powerful i could see myself like in all honesty i could be argued uh for knocking her up to three stars and putting her at three stars seems pretty decent and she is pretty decent now also goes into like noxus vladimir decks too and brom decks too really really decent card next up we got Fury of the North. I don't know about this card. Four mana burst spell, give an ally plus four plus four this round. I've seen some people doing really well with this card. A lot of other people are saying the card is just too expensive. Four mana, four, four. That's not that great, but it's good enough for Constructed, I think. It's also Sejuani's champion spell, so you'll still see it if you're playing against Freljord, especially Sejuani. Um, I've seen it in like Freljord... Ionia elusives as some extra reach, as well as just saving things from thing, saving cards from things like removal, such as mystic shots, get excited, etc., etc. I think the card is fine, serviceable. It's not the greatest combat trick, but it does its job. Very middle of the pack, three stars from me. You'll play it in the right deck, and it'll do really good. And your opponent 
will be like, oh no, I'm dying because plus four plus four is a relatively large amount of damage on something that is elusive. So three stars from me. If you're playing this card, you're probably playing all three. Next up, we got Ruthless Raider. Two mana, three, one, Overwhelm Tough. Not much to say about this card. Not a complex card. Uh, the card is playable and constructed, in my opinion. Uh, it's really nice. She can block fear some. If you're playing this kind of card, though, that means you probably don't want to be blocking too much. You want to be the one who's attacking. Uh, also, there is a card we'll see a little later on. There is payoff for playing lots of Overwhelm units. Also, this card is usually going to be able to get in at least one or two ping damage because of the Overwhelm. Activating things and helping activate things like Sejuani's, Swain's, Plunders, Gangplanks, etc, etc. Because of that, I think the card is fine. Tough is nice because normally I don't like things with one health. I'm always like, oh, Vile Feast, Withering Whale, Static Shock, etc, etc. Uh, but because of Tough, I think she is good enough. So I'm going to give her two stars. She has a home and that home is basically like tempo-y, overwhelmy, plundery stuff. And she does okay in that home. Not amazing, but she does her job and she's going to basically get in a couple of damage, maybe trade for something, and you'll be happy. So, two stars. Next up, we got Sejuani herself. We've been talking about her. Uh, she is a 6 mana 5, 6 Overwhelm. You might be noticing a pattern here. There's a lot of Overwhelm stuff in the recent set with Freljord. Uh, when you play Sejuani, give an enemy Frostbite and Vulnerable this round. That's a powerful play effect. Uh, to level her up, you have to have damaged the enemy Nexus in five different rounds this game. That's a little tough to do and play Sejuani on curve. Now, the thing is, the really nice thing is she doesn't have to be on the fields. She's kind of like Yasuo and Ezreal. She can be in the deck and every single time you damage your enemy Nexus, it's like, oh, hey, I saw that. That's cool. I'm going to level up now. Uh, leveled up Sejuani is a 6 mana 6 7, same playability, given enemy Frostbite and Vulnerable. Now, her next, her new line of text is very game winning. The first time I see you damage the enemy Nexus each round, Frostbite all enemies. That's insane. You put her, uh, make sure you are obviously attacking properly, having her be the first one to attack, especially if your opponent doesn't have any good blocks. So they chump this. And then the overwhelm damage goes and hits the Nexus, and then all of the other things get frostbitten. You pretty much won the game there. Also, her champion spell is Fury of the North, a four mana burst spell, give an ally plus four plus four. Good champ spell, too. I'd say Sejuani is just an overall good, strong card. A uh, little lackluster when she's not leveled up. Like, sure, the playability is good, but after that, she's just a six mana, five, six overwhelm, which is a little lackluster, but not terrible. Uh, you really want to just level up Sejuani and start just beating your opponent's face in. Still, though, I'm going to give her four stars. Very strong card, and I think she's really good at the moment. Problem is, Freljord kind of sucks at the moment, I think, because plunder and stealing cards kind of goes against like what Freljord's trying to do, which is uh, deck buffing. Next up, speaking of deck buffing, we got Shared Spoils, two mana burst spell. Grant the top three units in your deck, plus one, plus one. Plunder, draw one. Omen Hawk is a good card. This card is like Omen Hawk without the one, one body, with a little extra upside in that it hits more stuff, and you can actually draw and cycle. So it's kind of like Entreat as well. It's not really Entreat, but like I like to look at it like, eh, it's in a similar wheelhouse as Entreat. Two minute burst spell, draw a card. Same with this thing. The problem is, uh, the problem is, not with the card itself, but with Bilgewater stealing cards. It's like, congratulations. Thank you for buffing those units. I'll now play Pilford Goods and take them myself. That's why you, if you're playing this card, you need to plunder. If you're not plundering, uh, you're in a bad spot if you're not activating plunder here. So, still though, I think the card is fairly powerful. I'm going to give it two stars though, because it's not amazing. Like, you're going to play it. You're, play you're pretty much playing this as a cantrip, I think. Like, sure, two mana draw two is fine enough. It's And to buff some stuff, like buffing Overwhelm stuff, buffing like Sejuani, it's good. So two stars. I could see myself bumping this up to three stars in all honesty in the right metas. But for now, I, I went with two stars. More like two and a half if I did half stars. Next up, though, 
the Tusk Raider. Eight mana, seven, seven. It's another one of the ships that, when you play them, they draw their champion. The Tusk Raider is an eight mana, seven, seven. Plunder, double the power and health of allies in your deck. Play it, draw Sejuani. That plunder ability is terrifying. Terrifyingly good. You get the plunder ability of this off, you're pretty much winning the game because if you're playing this, that means you're obviously going to be playing Sejuani. Even if you're not playing any other overwhelm units, a doubled power and health Sejuani is terrifying. So this is, in my opinion, the second best of the four ships with uh, Misfortune's ship and Gangplank's ships being the two worst and Sejuani's ship, the Tusk Raider, and Swain's ship, I believe it's called the Leviathan, being the best too. Uh, I actually like this card. I really, really like it. Um, I'm actually going to give this thing three stars because it is it's a very slow card. You have to activate Plunder, which sometimes you're not able able to do, but it's still an eight mana, seven, seven. It blocks well. It's OK. It's serviceable. And, you know, it draws Sejuani. And the thing about Sejuani decks is if they're not playing Sejuani, that kind of sucks. Like you want to play your Sejuani. So that's nice. Uh, next up, though. Ursine Spirit Walker. This is the overwhelm payoff I was talking about. The five mana, four six boy. Plunder transforms into Stoneclaw Ursine. As you can see on the left, Stone Stormclaw Ursine is a five mana six six. Overwhelm. Other allies have plus five power. Or sorry. Other allies with five plus power have overwhelm. You know, when I was saying overwhelm payoff, I'd actually misread this card. I thought it said that other allies with Overwhelm have plus five power. This actually changes a lot of my rating. Um, whoops. <laughs> uh, yeah, that kind of changes a lot of what I was going to talk about here. Now that I actually read the card, whoops. I still think the card is fine. Like, it's five mana, four, six, not great, but the plunder is fine. And I mean, you, if you're not plundering this card, you're, the card is terrible. And all honesty, it's a five mana, four, six. That's draft filler. Now, is the flipped over version of him, the leveled up version, the Stormclaw Ursine, whatever you want to call it, that is why you're playing this guy. And if you're playing Freljord and you're playing this guy, you have obviously built your deck to be able to plunder. You're probably playing something like Ember Maiden. You're probably like Freljord Bilgewater. So giving everything that's big overwhelm, that's just game winning there still. Uh, you have a lot of big boys. That's usually the problem with big boys is if they don't have overwhelm, they just get chump blocked forever by things like spiders and just stuff like that. Uh, also, it works well with Sejuani, levels up Sejuani, Swain, other such things. I still think, even though I misread the card, that I like my previous rating of three stars. I'm still going to keep it at three stars. Card is good enough. Uh, fine in the five drop slot. and Not amazing, but... You'll play it in the right deck. So, yeah. Three stars. Next up, we got Wolf Rider. This card I like. Four mana, four, three, overwhelm, plunder, get an empty mana gem. I like ramping. Uh, the problem is... This card is... If you're not actually getting that mana gem, then you're pretty much overpaying by one mana. Because most... Four drops are uh, not four threes. You're a four three. You are paying three mana for a four three. So for an extra mana, you get overwhelm, which is not worth the whole extra mana. So you really need to get a plunder off. Now that plunder is a very powerful plunder. Uh, and if you're playing something like this, you're probably playing other such cards that are helping you get plunder every single turn, such as Ruthless Raider early on, the two drop with the two mana three one with overwhelm. So I think the card is fine and works in the right deck. Play this in something like Noxus Freljord. Uh, this way you could play like Sejuani and Swain. And just actually get some damage in every single turn by attacking in with this and other Overwhelm stuff. It's a good enough card. I'm going to give it two stars. Uh, the problem with the card, in my opinion, is... There are diminishing returns on ramp in a game like Room Terra and Hearthstone where eventually you reach your mana cap. Even in games like Magic, where there aren't really caps on how much mana you can have, how many lands you can have in Magic, even there, it's like, okay, I'm kind of ramped enough. I don't really want to ramp. Anyone who's played ramp can tell you that. It's like, all right, I've played my one ramp spell. I don't really want to play another ramp spell. I'm good. So 
Uh, the second Wolf Rider is just so much worse than the first one. Now, granted, it's still a 4-3 Overwhelm. That's fine, but for four mana, that's a little expensive. Plus three health, kind of easy to deal with, with things like Gotcha, Get Excited, Grasp, so on and so forth. Still, though, the card is fine and goes into a deck, and if you're playing it in an Overwhelm-based deck, you're probably playing all three of them. So it's good enough for a deck. Next up, that's the last of the Freljord cards. We got Ionia. First card in Ionia. I like this card. Two mana, three, two. Claws of the Dragon. Claws of the Dragon doesn't really have text on her once you play her, but she says, summon me from hand once you've played two spells this round. Now, the thing is, let us you can actually summon her before combat happens. Your opponent just open attacks in before you, giving you a priority window to actually play anything. Cast two random burst spells, and then you just get a claw of the first dragon on the field to block with. Maybe even two. So that's nice, obviously. Uh, the problem is she is a little lackluster. I kind of wish she was a 2-3 that is just more defensive. Uh, I mean, like, being a 3-2 is good in its own right because you can block fearsome, block something like Elise. But eh, most of the time, you're not going to be playing this as a 2-drop. This is going to come down when you've played uh, two spells in a turn. There's a lot of cards like this that are rewarding you for playing two spells in one turn. And if you're that kind of deck, you're probably playing this as a three of. So I still think this is worth three stars. Goes into a number of different spells matter decks uh, or just spell spammy decks. And there are quite a few of them. And it's solid filler. Like I could use, you, you will sometimes cut it out in the right meta and to fit in other such cards, but it's still solid in an open meta. So three stars. Next up. We got Concussive Palm. At first, I thought this card was bad. Four mana, fast spell, stun an enemy to summon a Tail of the Dragon. Tail of the Dragon is a three mana, three, two. When it's recalled, transform me into Concussive Palm. Uh, yeah, like I was saying, I thought this card was bad at first. Because I was like, wow, four mana to stun something and all you get is a three, two as well? That sounds terrible. Uh, because I was like, there's um the spider in Noxus that's like a three, two that also does the same thing. And I think that's three mana. I can't remember. In all honesty, I don't play that card that much. And no no one really plays that card that much outside of Yasuo control. Uh, the more and more I played with this card, though, I was like, oh, this is actually a lot better. Because since it's a spell, especially the fast spell, your opponent can just go in and attack immediately. And then you can just play it while combat's going on. So it's like, oh, hey, um, you're using a combat trick on some creature to basically grow it and make it so it kills my creature no concussive bomb so i like the card also it targets so you know ezreal ezreal karma is uh liking this card i'm giving this card four stars it's a lot stronger than i initially thought really really good card really really powerful don't even try to do any like fancy thing with the whole like recalling the tail to bring it back to your hand just look at the tail it's just a three two that sometimes will turn back into concussive palm yeah, you can meme around and try and like get like play concussive palm bring back the tail play concussive palm again and so on and so forth but don't do that if you're trying to climb that's a freaking meme next up though deep meditation this card is crazy good four mana burst spell draw two other spells cost two less if you cast two plus spells last round this card is insane, in my opinion. I could see this card honestly getting nerfed to five mana or something. Uh, first off, notice it only t draws spells. It doesn't just draw anything from the deck. So you can do some like cute stuff where it's like, okay, I'm just going to like not put in too many spells, but I'll still play Deep Meditation to draw those spells. You probably don't want to do that because Deep Meditation, you obviously want to play it in a spell heavy deck. So you can keep the whole the whole uh, game plan of just playing at least two spells a turn for Deep Meditation. Uh, I like the card. It's really strong. Um, two mana draw two is busted, even if it's only spells and not creatures, like you probably might want it sometimes because you're trying to find like a Karma or something. Still though, I think the card is super powerful. Five stars. Like I really am high on this card. I mean, there's not much to say about it. It's just a four mana draw two. And a four mana draw two, as we've seen from bilge water in the form of salvage which is four mana toss two draw two 
some people are playing that card just as a four mana draw too. I think that's a bad idea, but that is just to be considered playable at four mana just draw two. Shows just how good draw is in the game right now. And this thing, even if you're playing four, paying four mana just to draw two spells, that's okay. And then since you're drawing two spells, you're probably even setting up for more deep meditations because you might deep meditation into deep meditation. And then if you're getting a two mana deep meditation, that's insanely good. So like I said, five stars, crazy good card. Next up, from crazy good card to crazy meh, mediocre card, we got Dragon's Rage. Dragon's Rage is a seven mana slow spell. Already big yawn from me. It says, an ally kicks an enemy into their nexus, striking both. If the enemy survives, recall it. There's some cute stuff you can do. Like, you can have a really big, like, unit, like a big Nautilus or a Ladros or something, and yeah, Dragon's Rage targeting that ally to kill some random thing, and then that's like, wow, that's a lot of damage at face. Problem is, that's a lot of mana. It's a slow spell, too, so you gotta be very careful, and it's hard to cast. Since it's so much mana, you're opening yourself up to things like removal, just removing whatever is getting targeted, whether whatever it is. Um, counter spells, obviously, like denies. And I'm not the biggest fan. I don't think you should see this thing in Constructed, and you probably shouldn't play it. Maybe as a one of, if you're really desperate for a pseudo kill spell. But still, I'm not the biggest fan of this card. Zero stars for me. You'll still see this card, don't get me wrong, because uh Lee Sin, as we'll see later on, but you shouldn't be actually playing this card in your deck. Next up, though. Well, now we got a great card. Eye of the Dragon. Uh, those of you who come from Magic might be like, oh, hello, young Pyromancer. Uh, Eye of the Dragon is a 2-mana 1-3. A tune, if you don't remember what a tune is, it is when you play this card, refill one spell mana. At the start of the round, you get to summon a Dragonling if you cast two plus spells this round. Now, this is where Deep Meditation is uh, pretty good. Just Deep Meditation, and you can keep the Eye of the Dragon constantly summoning Dragonlings. The Dragonling is a 2 mana 2 1 Ephemeral Lifesteal. Aggro, or aggro decks hate this card. They really do. And let's just say, even if you're not against aggro, it's still an okay thing because a 2 1 Lifesteal. It's okay against um, mid-range. Gives you blockers if your opponent's on the attack. Uh, helps refill your life. Against a control deck, if you're constantly just spawning out two ones, that's putting on some pressure that's not inconsequential. Guard is pretty good. Uh, I'm going to give it only four stars, though, because like I said about the control matchup, it's good in every matchup, but in the control matchup, little lackluster, and at that point... You kind of probably don't want to play the card. Like, outside of burn decks and I'd say, like, fairly aggressive mid-range decks, just, like, against aggressive mid-range and just aggro decks in general, that's where you want this card. If you're not seeing that much of either of those decks, you can start to cut this card from your deck and play, like, Claws of the Dragon or some other card instead. Next up, we got Horns of the Dragon. We're going from, like, good card to bad card to good card to bad card. Uh, this is a bad card. Six mana, four, six, double attack. There's nothing much to talk about with this guy. Sure, you can do some stuff where you can give him lots of buffs and so on and so forth. And then you die because you just spent like three cards to give this guy some really high attack. And then your opponent plays Vengeance or Will of Ionia or Concussive Palm or insert any other thing here. Card is not good. Zero stars. Keep him in Expedition. In Expedition, he's fine. Not even... He's okay in Expedition, I guess. Next up, though, we got Lee Sin himself. Now we actually have something we can talk about. There's a lot to talk about with Lee Sin. He is a 6-mana, 3-6. Uh, he says, when you cast a spell, give him Challenger for the round. And if you cast another spell, he gets Barrier for the round. You can do this at burst speed, so that's kind of cute. Where it's like, your opponent tries to do something to kill him, cast two spells, get Barrier... Uh, to level up Lee Sin, you have to have cast seven spells this game, like Yasuo, like Sejuani, like uh, Gangplank. He doesn't have to be on the board. He can be in your deck. As long as you cast seven spells, he is leveled up. Leveled up Lee Sin is terrifying. Uh, same thing with the whole like challenger barrier, and if you cast spells, that thing is still the same. 
However, he Dragon Rages enemies that he challenges. We've seen Dragon Rage. We were talking about how Dragon Rage is a powerful card, but it's just too expensive. If you're casting Dragon's Rage for effectively zero mana because of Lee Sin, sure, you have to cast a couple of spells, or at least one spell, to get Challenger. Whatever. Dragon's Rage for very cheap and basically as a little extra from every spell you're casting is really good. And then you can buff Lee Sin too and give Lee Sin some extra attack so he does a little more damage to the Nexus. That's also really great. And then you can give Lee Sin Barrier so he's not really taking too much damage. Very, very strong champ. I'm only going to give him four stars though because he is only pretty much going in spell heavy decks. And yes, there is some variety like... Lee Sin Karma, Lee Sin Heimerdinger, Lee Sin Vi. There's a lot of variations. So, and he is still really strong, but only like control y, mid rangey, whatever you want to say, decks really want him. Like control decks slash greedy, mid rangey, tempo y, whatever decks want him. Uh, but there are a lot of burst spells too that work really well with him. Uh, he is a good card. Speaking of good burst spells, uh, return, good burst spell. Uh, retreat though is a two mana fast spell recall an ally to create a fleeting return in hand it's a pretty good card return is also by the way one mana burst spell summon an ally that costs three or less from hand this is one of the cards that they printed that is uh, helping out the whole casting two or more spells in a single turn synergy because as you can see two spells here what you will do is you will probably, your opponent will try to kill something. They'll use like a Vengeance or a Grasp or whatever, some kill spell on something you have. Like, a, I don't know, like a Yasuo or something. Or a, uh, I don't know, anything, an Eye of the Dragon. You play Retreat. Bring that thing back and then you can use Return. What's something that's great that costs three mana in Ionia? Shadow Assassin. Wow. So yeah, card is great. I really like the card. Um, nothing like, it's not going to be like backbreakingly terrible for your opponent if you retreat something, because unless you're able to really get value out of the return, it's not that insanely high in terms of value. So I'm only going to give it three stars. Like, a bounce spell to save a unit that can't basically bounce your opponent's stuff, but you can use it to kind of cheat out a three drop. It's okay. You're pretty much playing this card because you want to activate the, uh, you want to save your stuff while also activating the whole casting of two spells per turn. Basically, uh, Eye of the Dragon. Next up, though, we got Scales of the Dragon. Three mana, four, two. When I'm summoned, create a Dragon's Protection in hand. Dragon's Protection is a two mana slow spell. Grant an ally, plus O, plus three. That's not that good of a spell. Now... I think this card is playable because of Lee Sin, and you want to increase your spell count. Uh, also, quick note, the Dragon's Protection spell, the plus O plus three buff, that is a permanent buff. It doesn't say until end of turn, so that's nice too, I guess. You know, give it to something who is a little fragile, like the Scales himself, turn him from a three mana four two into a four five. It's okay. You're pretty much only playing this guy to uh, get on the board and, you know, maybe take a block and then use the spell to up the Lee Sin counter or something, or just as a random spell to activate the whole uh, casting of two spells a turn. He's fine. Not impressive, uh, but you might play him the right deck. Two stars. Next up, we got Sonic Wave. Now, this is a spell I like. Two mana burst spell. Give an ally challenger this round. Create a fleeting resonating strike in hand. Resonating strike is a one mana burst spell. Give an ally plus two plus zero this round. That's great. First off, it's two spells, so it activates things like Eye of the Dragon, helps out Lee Sin, um, and plus you can use it as really janky removal. Give something that's just big or strong challenger, so it can kill something that your opponent has that's problematic. Uh, if you have an Eye of the Dragon, you can use this on the Dragonling to give the Dragonling challenger, and then use the Resonating Strike to turn the Dragonling into a 4 one with challenger. That's a lot of life. Card is good, pretty nice. I'm going to give it three stars, though, because it's not a not crazy in terms of its effect. Like, it's strong. Don't get me wrong, but it's not going to it's not creating value. It's not really putting pressure on there. Your opponent's not going to see Sonic Wave and be like, oh, no, Sonic Wave, whatever will I do? It is a role player in a deck 
and it does its job well and that job is to basically have your have a unit you control kill something and maybe cast two spells in the turn so you can have a good future turn anyway that is the last of the ionia cards next up we got noxus we're starting with the bad one here we got the armored tusk rider it's not a good card six mana overwhelm six five i only take damage from enemy units with five plus power the problem is if you're in noxus you know who else is at six mana darius uh, i'd rather play darius over this guy if i'm in a deck that wants a big overwhelm boy in the late game uh i'm not a fan of this guy maybe if you're playing something that wants uh to like overwhelm over and over and plunder or get some damage in on the nexus maybe but again just play darius maybe you have to play this because you're playing two other champions and you can't fit darius in your deck in that case maybe this card's okay but even then i don't want to play this card and i guess the extra text of the whole only take damage from enemy units with five plus power is cute but i'm not too impressed in honesty i don't like this card zero stars i really don't think this card is good enough for constructed at the moment so zero stars i could probably see it i could see myself being nicer and giving this guy one star for potential but I know, honestly zero stars he's not that good next up though we got orc glint horn i have no idea about this guy six mana six six attack stun all damaged enemies we have another minotaur who's also a six man six six he says though uh stun the weakest enemy at the uh start of the round minotaur reckoner i believe it's weakest like it might be strongest but i'm pretty sure it's weakest he is okay and i feel like this guy is not just because they're minotaurs because they're very similar because they're minotaurs i assume that's why they have a similar effect uh, I feel like he competes with Minotaur Reckoner for the same spot in a deck. And that's probably like Yasuo control decks or stun decks in general. The issue I have with this guy over Reckoner is the whole... First off, he has to attack in. Which is not difficult, obviously, but the whole only stuns damaged enemies. There are things like Ember Maiden, of course, and death lotus if you really are desperate but i feel like you might be a little uh it might be a little hard to actually get some damage on things just to stun them i feel like maybe in a in yasuo control you'd rather have minotaur reckoner and other and in other decks that want to stun an ability this is better but i'm not too impressed by this guy he is similar in power to the reckoner i think though so i'm gonna give him two stars it's okay i think and like a six mana six six is pretty big and beefy so six or two stars next up we got city breaker i have no idea about this card i have gone back and forth on this card at first i thought this card was a zero star card just unplayable because like i don't want to play a four mana zero five that's awful uh four mana zero five round start deal one to the enemy nexus here's the thing about city breaker um first off it can win games all by itself because you know it's a uh, slow painful death by a thousand cuts kind of thing but that's not why you're playing this card you're playing this card because of things like swain uh plunder etc etc now is that good enough or a whole card uh arguably yes i would say honestly at first i thought it wasn't but i played this card and it's okay like it's a good way to get plunder without actually having to do combat. Uh, it blocks okay against aggro. Not good or even well, it's just okay. So I'm actually going to give this thing two stars. It has a home. It's not that great in the home. And I feel like in the future, it'll probably get replaced by just better ways to deal damage to a nexus and activate plunder and so on and so forth. But for now, it's good enough. Uh, next up, though, we got Death's Hand. Three mana, fast spell, deal two to an enemy unit, and one to their nexus. So, um, this card is great, in my opinion. I think at the moment, the only deck that wants this ability, or this card, is Swain decks in general. Now, think about this. Mystic Shot is two mana, deal two to anything. Now, this can't hit face. 
Well, it does technically hit face because of the whole second line, but whatever. Uh, Mystic Shot, like I was saying, like, let's just look at Mystic Shot as a two mana deal too. For an extra mana, you're basically removing the ability to go face, but you're getting the ability to hit a unit and then deal one to the face anyway. Activates Plunder, activates Swain. I keep saying that a lot. Activates Sejuani. Card is good. I really like the card, but I think it only has a home in... Why am I showing Death's Hand? I didn't add the Death's Hand thing here. Oops. I haven't showed Death's Hand's image. Um, I believe... Here you go. You get to see me do this live on camera. Behold. <laughs> there is the Death's Hand ranking rating. Uh, I will give it... In my opinion, I give Death's Hand three stars. It's no mystic shot, but it activates plunder. It's still dealing two damage. That's good enough. And I think it is fine and playable. So three stars. Fairly good. If you're playing this card, you like it and you're playing three up. Sorry for the small technical difficulty. Forgive me. Uh, next up, though. You saw her already a little bit. We got Imperial Demolitionist. Two mana, two, three. Playability, so you get a... There's a pause there. You can counter it, too, uh, with die. Deal one to an ally unit to deal two to the enemy Nexus. This card is crazy good. Um, Burn is really good, and this is one of the reasons Burn is really good. Uh, Crimson Disciple is uh, good friends with this card. Uh, who else is good friends with this card? Boom Crew Rookie? This card is scary. Very, very scary. Also, outside of burn decks, it's also just hitting face to activate Plunder, helping out Swain. Card goes in a lot of different decks. Two mana for a 2-3 is also just fine. And now granted, you can pseudo counter her playability by using something like Mystic Shot or Vengeance or Grasp to kill whatever she's targeting to prevent the two damage from going off. So you can do that, that's cute. But still, this card is so good. I am, I hate this card because I have died to this a lot. I'm gonna give her five stars. One of the stronger cards to come out of the new set. So five stars. Next up, not such a strong card. Iron Ballista, three mana, four, three, Overwhelm. Wolf Rider without the whole plunder ability. I believe the Freljord card was called Wolf Rider. Yeah, the card is fine. Nothing much to talk about here. It's like if you want a, uh, if you want something in the three drop slot just to bash face in, you could do worse than this. Still, though, like, I feel like eventually there will just be better stuff than this. But if there's overwhelm payoff, maybe, but yeah, I'm not too impressed by this card. It's getting one star for me. Not too special. Not impressed. One star. Now, speaking of not impressed, I'm very impressed by this card. I hate it. Noxian Fervor, three mana fast spell, deal three to an ally unit to deal three to anything. I hate burn. <laughs> I just, I just want to say that I hate burn. Uh, normally, when you would be playing against burn, you'd be like, okay, you're attacking in with like, I don't know, uh, Legion Rearguard at the one mana three two. Cool. I'm going to kill it with my Grasp of the Undying so I can kill it and gain three life. That's great. Now, the problem is because of Noxian Fervor, it used to be, it's like, okay, you're killing my unit. I'll just use Glimpse to kill it and draw two cards. Now it's like, okay, you're killing my unit. I'm going to kill my own unit and then burn your face for three or maybe even kill a unit for three. This card is crazy good. This card is just so, so good. I'm so, I don't know, not tired, but I'm sick of this card because of how good it is. Every time I see it, I am sad. Also, because of the whole, like, since you kill a grass target, your opponent who's playing grass doesn't even get the three life. Also insane. Have fun with this card, burn players. You will play all of them. So this card, five stars. Super powerful, super strong. I hate playing against it. Next up, not such a strong card. Uh, Ravenous Flock, one mana fast spell. Deal four to a unit if it is damaged or stunned. I have no idea if this card is good. I think the card is good, 
The problem is the deck that wants this card is not good. And I feel like the deck that wants this card is Yasuo Control. I really do think if Yasuo Control gets just better stun effects, this card will be insane. One mana deal four is crazy. Like combine this with like Minotaur Reckoner so you can just clear stuff out for one mana. Wow. And the whole if something's damaged means it's not useless. Also, it's Swain's champion spell. So you'll see it even outside of Yasuo control decks. I think it is playable and good as a card, just needs a home. I'm going to give it two stars though, because it's kind of a little bit difficult to actually play and get value out of. Next up though, we've got Swain himself. We've been talking about this guy a lot uh, and that's because he opens up a lot of strategies and he's very powerful. He is a five mana, three, six fearsome. Nexus strike, Deal three to the enemy Nexus. To level up Swain, you have to have done 12 non-combat damage this game. Also leveled up Swain is a, first off, he's a freaking beast of a card. Five mana, four, seven fearsome. When we deal non-combat damage to the enemy Nexus, stun the strongest back row enemy. And then when this guy Nexus strikes, deal three to all enemies. That is terrifying. I mean, also, first off, Ravenous Flock, as we saw previously, is his uh, chance spell. Okay, chance spell, not amazing, but you know what? Swain himself is just so good. I'm terrified of this guy. Now, the problem I see is, uh, I think the biggest problem with Swain is he's kind of trying to find out where he goes best. I've seen him in things like uh, aggro decks, control decks, mid-range decks, aggro control, all kinds of decks. I feel like because of that, and I have been impressed in all of them. I've seen him paired up with Sejuani. I've seen him paired up with Darius. I've seen him paired up with every, well, not everyone, but a lot of people. I feel like that just shows off his great versatility, how powerful he is by himself. Leveled up Swain is terrifying, and he's fairly thick. He's got a big butt, kind of hard to kill. Pretty strong. Uh, because of all that, though, I'm going to give him four stars. Not five, because... 12 combat, 12 non-combat damage is quite a lot. And if you're not leveling up Swain, he's a little weak. Like a five mana 36 isn't terrible, especially with Fearsome. And he can, if he has to, he'll just level himself up with his Nexus Strike ability. Now, if he strikes the Nexus, that means yeah, that's probably six damage he's done. Anyway, though, great card. Now, let's say like yeah, you're trying to play some Swain stuff, though. Well, he's got a boat. He's got the Leviathan. It's an eight mana, five, eight, Overwhelm. It's the final ship from all the ship cycle. Uh, when you play it, you get to draw Swain. At the start of the round, deal one to the enemy Nexus three times. Leveled up Swain with uh, this, terrifying. Uh, this card I think is the best of the ship cycle. Eight mana, it's a lot of mana, but five eight, it blocks okay. Overwhelmed so it can get some Nexus damage in the round start thing is really really good just overall really decent card swain's a good champ so i like the card i'm only gonna give it four stars though i could be rating this a little too highly in my opinion but i feel like unless you're like a super aggressive deck who's playing swain in which case i don't think that's a good deck in my opinion uh you are probably playing this as at least two of unless the meta is extremely slow because this is a slow card don't get me wrong but still i like this ship Next up, though, that's the final Noxus card. We're heading over to Piltover and Zaun. First up, we got Chief Mechanist Zevi. I'm not a big fan of Zevi, I'm sorry. Uh, she is a 6-mana 5-6. When you draw a card, give it fleeting and create a copy of it. My issue with Zevi is I don't really see what kind of deck wants her. Like, aggro? No way. Mid-range, maybe? Control? Nah, I don't think so. Like, 6 mana 5, 6 isn't terrible. Uh, hello, Sejuani. Uh, I believe Sejuani is a 5, 6. Uh, I guess, like, maybe in a mid-range deck you can play this, and then she'll generate a lot of value. It's just she's so slow is the thing, right? Like, she comes down as a 6 mana 5, 6, and then you have to draw cards. Like, sure, you have things like spell mana, so you can drop her on turn six and then use her spell mana to draw a card, but then you have to actually 
actually play the fleeting card to get the value. If you're not, I mean, like, sure, you drew cards still anyway, but whatever. Still, though, like, I think she might have a home in the future, but for now, I don't see anyone that wants her. And even decks that would like that, she is really slow in decks that like that this ability. So one star from me. I can see, like, some niche scenarios and niche decks that would like this type of ability, but eh, a little too slow. Next up, though. We got probably what is the best um, Piltover and Zon card. Piltover and Zon, by the way, feels like it got a lot of cards that are good in like one or two decks and kind of trash everywhere else, which is why I think Gotcha is one of the better cards outside of Vi, who we'll see later. Uh, gotcha is a four mana fast spell. When drawn, costs two less this round, deal three to a unit. First off, don't think this is better than Get Excited. Get Excited can first off hit face. Also, it always costs three mana. Sure, you have to discard a card, but whatever. Uh, now, if you're obviously casting Gotcha for two mana, that car this card is crazy good. It's like, compare this to Mystic Shot then? Wow. Uh, but again, like, it's not necessarily better than Get Excited because, like, sure, it doesn't take a card like Get Excited, but Get Excited can hit face, and sometimes you just need that extra three face damage burn. Because of that, I still think it's good, but it's not insanely good. Three stars. I could see myself putting this up to four stars, but I think because it is fairly expensive and sometimes you're like, I don't want to actually cast it when you draw it, even if you can, because your opponent might not have anything high enough in terms of priority of what you want to kill. Like, obviously, if you if they have like an Elise or something, like Elise is a great target for Gotcha. But still, just three stars from me. Meh. Just meh. Good enough, and you're probably going to play three of them, but still. Get excited existed already. Next up, though. Insightful Investigator. Four mana. Three, three. When you play a two-cost card, draw one fleeting. I think this card is really strong. Now, I feel like this is also my control player value-loving self coming through, but... Drawing an extra card every time you play a two-cost card is really good. Play this, just like start mystic shotting, playing like boom crew rookies, etc., etc. Just keep drawing cards. That sounds great. Now the problem is she is a little small, little fragile. Four mana, four, three, three. Play things like gotcha, grass, get excited, etc., etc. She'll just die. But still, she'll probably get some value. The issue I have is um, at the moment I feel like. There's just not enough two-cost cards to make a good deck built around her. But I feel like in the future, as we get more and more cards, her power level will go higher and higher and higher. And then you'll see a deck that just plays her and then just plays like a two-drop and plays another two-drop and keeps cycling through their deck. Crazy good. Uh, for now, though, I am only going to give her two stars because that is a very niche deck. And while people have been experimenting with this card, the biggest problem I've noticed is that a lot of the two cost cards are either situational or going only one type of deck, and that's not for Investigator. Anyway, next up, we got Patrol Wardens. Three mana, four, three. When I'm drawn, I cost one less this round. Card's not that good. If this card is not coming down as a two drop, it is terrible and just a vanilla four, three. I mean, it's always going to be a vanilla four, three because it doesn't have text outside of the whole drawn cost one less thing. So yeah, not much to talk about here. I think this card is predominantly meant for Expedition, but I could see it being played in like some kind of aggro deck, but uh, just play Burn instead. <laughs> I'm sorry. If you're in Built Over and Zonny, we won't play aggro, just play Burn. Uh, maybe in the future, if we get cards that let you put a card from your hand back on top of your deck, so you can always have this thing cost two, maybe. But even then, I feel like this card is just not getting enough value for the card itself. Next up. Oh, sorry. Let's give the rating one star. <laughs> like I said, niche card. Maybe in the future it'll be good enough, but I don't think it's good. Next up, though, we got Subversible. Now, I feel like I'm crazy, but I think this card is great. Five mana, one five, elusive. When I'm summoned, draw one. So this thing's always going to draw one. Then, if you've played at least ten other cards with different names, grant me plus four plus zero. Oh. So that becomes a five mana, five five, elusive draw a card. Five mana, five fives are great. Hello, Garen. Hello, Gangplank. And then Elusive? This thing is going to win games fast. 
Now, the problem is you might be saying, well, streamer, you have to have played 10 other cards with different names. Yes, I know that is difficult. But because there are more and more cards that just generate random cards, it's not that difficult. We'll see later on a card called uh, Trial of Evidence will do that does something like that. So I think the card is fairly strong. Uh, and I think if more and more payoff comes out for playing a deck that just plays a lot of different cards, Sub Percival will definitely be a three of in that kind of deck. So I'm going to give this thing three stars. Fairly powerful card if you can activate it. So pretty nice. Next up, though, we got Suit Up. Four mana, burst spell, one drawn, cost two less this round. Send an ally to 4-4. Four, four. I'm not too big of a fan of this card. Granted, uh, it's not meant for control decks. This is like an aggro tempo -y deck. Uh, the dream is you play a turn one fizz, and then you play a, you draw and play the turn two suit up, and then you have a 4-4 four, four fizz. That's terrifying. Uh, that doesn't happen too often, though, is the issue. Still, though, this is kind of cute. You, like... You know, use your suit up and you play it on something like Coral Creatures or anything that's just small and just came down early. Make it into a bigger card that's an actual threat. Uh, burst spell, burst speed is nice so your opponent can't kill whatever you're suiting up. Uh, I would say it's fine as like a one over two of in the right deck, but if you're paying four, that's a lot to pay. So I'm going to give it two stars in all honesty. It's fine, but it's not amazing. Next up though. Trail of Evidence. This is one of the cards I was talking about when I was talking about Subversible that just creates random cards. Uh, Trail of Evidence is a two mana burst spell. Create a random two cost card in hand and it costs zero this round. Now, first off, that's any card. It's not specifically creatures, allies, or spells or whatever. I don't know if it can give you champions. I've never seen it give some champion like a Lee's or something, but I assume it can give you an Elise. Uh, the problem with the card is, like I just said, it gives you any card. When you're playing Trail of Evidence, I feel like you're probably playing a deck that wants to play a lot of spells. And if you don't hit a spell, that kind of sucks. Also, there are some pretty bad two-mana cards. Now, if you play this with Insightful Investigator, hey, it's a two-mana card. That's pretty nice. Also, Burst Speed is nice. So you can play it with, like, Lee Sin. That's pretty cool. So, I think the card is fine. Uh, the only thing keeping me from giving this thing too high of a rating, I'm giving it two stars, is the randomness does hurt, so it's not reliable. You're gonna basically be playing this in a deck that wants to be casting a lot of spells, so just two stars from me. Uh, next up, though. We got Vault Breaker. First off, it's Vi's Champion spell. Three mana, burst speed. Give an ally plus two plus zero this round. Create a Fleeting Vault Breaker in hand. That is a very bad rate for plus two, plus oh. Three mana, you can go to like Noxus and get that for like one mana, and you can get one mana plus three, plus oh. So you better be doing something with the whole basically extra Vault Breakers you're creating. Now, when I first saw this card, I was like, oh boy, you know what this means? It's a three mana spell. Heimerdinger. I've tried it out. It's not that good, but it's, it's serviceable. Uh, you're going to see this card still, though, because Vi plays it. I think the card is actually good. I'm giving this thing two stars, though, because one, like I said, it's um, you can combine with Heimerdinger to create an army of 3-1 elusives. Uh, burst Speed is nice, so you can just do this without your opponent being able to react. Uh, it also is it create, it's a spell that creates more spells, so Lee Sin and Ionia likes this, too. So it's fine, I think. Not amazing. Next up, though, we got the Veteran Investigator. I have no idea who wants this card. Two mana, three, two. When I'm summoned, all players draw one. I feel like aggro, the deck that would like a card like this to keep drawing more and more gas, has better cards they could be playing in the early game. Maybe you play it in the late game to get more and more gas. Control probably doesn't want this because they're like, I don't want to give my aggro opponent more gas. Uh, I guess it can block... Um, fearsome but i'm not too impressed by this card i'm actually just gonna give this guy one star not really a big fan of him uh next up though we got in my opinion the best card from piltover and zon in this expansion we got the big fist girl the big punchies we got vi five mana two five challenger tough 
while in play or in hand, grant me plus one plus so when you play another card with a max of plus eight plus so. She, so she becomes a 10 five. Uh, to level her up, she has to strike for 10 or more, and her leveled up form is a five mana 10 six that says, still has challenger and tough. Uh, when I strike a unit while attacking, deal five to the enemy nexus, and as we can see, Vault Breaker is her champ spell, goes well with her whole toolkit. Very good card. I've seen her all over the place. Mid-range has played her. I've seen her in aggro. I've seen her in control. I really like her in control as a way to just kill problematic things without taking too much damage thanks to Tough, and then turn her into a win con herself because of the whole leveled up form of her and just growing bigger and bigger. Also, 10-6. That's a pretty big unit. Throw her at the face of your opponent with atrocity and kill them that way. Very great card. Very good all around. Just super powerful. Love Vi. Great waifu too. Easy five stars. Go play Vi. You'll love her. Now, as the last of our Piltover and Zon cards, let's head over to our last region. We got, again, my favorite region out of all of them. We got the Shadow Isles. Uh, first off, we're starting with a bad card. We got Bark Beast. One mana, one one. The first time an ally dies, grant me plus two plus two. Eh, that's all I'm going to say. Like, I'd rather just play Hapless Aristocrat. Uh, now you might say, oh, this is like some Aristocrats payoff. Basically some uh, self-killing of stuff payoff. The problem is like... The kind of deck that wants this is more aggressive Aristocrats decks. Basically something with like, I feel like if you're playing this card, you want to put it in something like a Lucian deck, maybe with Callista. That kind of deck sucks. In all honesty, it needs more tools. This is not the tool. I mean, a one mana 3-3 is pretty good as we've seen from the uh, Plunderer guy, the one mana 2-2 Plunder plus one plus one from Bilgewater. So, if you have an easy way to activate this guy, he's fairly good. I don't like him too much because if you haven't actually had something die, the whole being a one-man, one-one, very susceptible to removal. I'm only going to give this guy one star. Goes into only one type of deck. The deck is weak. Very, The card itself is not high impact. Kind of sucks to draw late game. Not too impressed by the guy. Anyway, next up, we got Blighted Caretaker. Three mana, two, one. Play... Kill an, kill an ally to summon two saplings. Saplings, as you can see on the left, are one mana, two ones with Ephemeral and Challenger. I love this card. Another way to just kill your own units that want to die. Uh, the saplings are great value. Just clog up some uh, big boys to keep them from blocking. Kill some problematic smaller things. Uh, the issue is like, that's a lot of X ones. So be careful of Withering Whale. Uh, still, though, this card is really, really good, I think. Uh, three stars from me. Little, uh, little, just like middle of the road in terms of power level. Not insanely good, but she does her job. She will kill your stuff. She will help out uh, things like Maokai, uh, They Who, Endure, etc., etc. Anyway, though, next up, we got Dead Blue Wanderer. Three mana, three, two. Lifesteal. When I'm summoned, toss three. Pretty much only goes into certain decks like deep or toss decks in general, like Malkai decks. We'll see Malkai later. Uh, still, though, in those kind of decks, those decks are a little slow in the early game and kind of get rushed down by things like aggro and burn. This guy does his best to slow that down, and he does it fairly well. And tossing three does really help the game plan of getting to deep or tossing enough cards for something like Malkai. I think the card is good. Doesn't go into too many decks, though. So I'm only going to give him three stars because he is good in the decks he's really good in, but only three stars for kind of a lack of um, versatility, if that makes sense. Now, next up, we got Malkai himself. It's a lot to unpack here with Malkai. At first, I was like, this guy is a meme. And then I was like, oh, this guy is insanely great. Now I've finally come to the opinion that yeah, he's just okay and he has his home. Maokai is a 4 mana 1-4. The first time you play another ally each round, toss to summon a sapling. To level up Maokai, 25... Uh, let's, I'll just read it out here. 
When your units have died or your cards have been tossed 25 times this game, he levels up. That's not impossible. That has hap that it does happen more than you would expect in games. Uh, leveled up Malkai is pretty much a game winner. Four mana, two, five. Regeneration, too. He gets that. That's nice. Uh, when I level up, obliterate the enemy deck, leaving four non-champions. So basically, mill your opponent's deck. At the start of the round, summon a sapling. Also, his champion spell is sap magic. Three mana burst spell. Toss three. Heal allies by three. Shuffle the Malkai, of course. Doesn't heal your uh, Nexus, so that kind of sucks. Um, at first I thought this guy was a meme because I was like, 25 times? That's way too much. And then I actually started to play with Maokai and I was like, wow, this guy is great. Um, and then I was like, yeah, he's a little fragile and easy to kill. Now, there are a lot of decks that like Maokai. Deep decks to get deep faster. Um, they who endure. Just to get more things to have die for they who endure, basically the saplings. I think the card is good. I've seen Maokai just in like, also just control decks as Mal just trying to stall and stall and stall and then play a Maokai to obliterate the deck. And then people were like, what if we put in they who endure? I've also seen Maokai in ephemeral decks with Hecarim with something like ghost chariots, shark chariots, sorry. Because uh, the saplings are an ephemeral, so it brings back the shark chariots. Pretty good card. Little fragile, which is why I'm going to give it only three stars, though. Still, if he had like a little bit more health, like as a one five, I think he would be easily four stars. He's very borderline four stars. Good card, though. Has his home. Very powerful where he's powerful. Next up, we got Never Glade Collector. Five mana, two, four. When another ally dies, drain one from the enemy nexus. I underestimated this card. I thought this card wasn't that good. Uh, turns out this card is pretty, pretty good. They Who Endure is really good at the moment. Pretty much a control deck that just tries to stall and stall until they can play a big They Who Endure and throw it at your face with atrocity to kill you. This guy does the job of basically preventing you from dying. His stats are a little low, like 5 mana 2, 4 kind of sucks for a 5 drop. Uh, but he's not here to fight. He's here to just sit around and see other people die and basically slow the game down. And plus, he also puts on pressure too. I like the card. The more and more I've seen it and played with it, and I think it is very powerful. Uh, something like the Prankster, we've seen the 0-3, but this time you get to actually heal, so even better. Uh, I'm actually going to give this card three stars. I think it is a powerful card, and it does its job, and it does its job really well. So, three stars. Next up, though. Oh, we got a meme. Overgrown Snapvine. Seven mana, four, three. When you summon a follower, kill it to summon an overgrown Snapvine. Don't play this card. This card is a meme. Uh, decks that want to actually kill units have better ways to kill units. Decks that want to flood the board and be aggressive shouldn't play this. Decks that want to ramp and do something have better ramp. So there's no deck that wants this type of card. Uh, zero stars. Sorry, Mr. Snapvine, you're not that good. Uh, maybe at six mana or something, you'll be playable. But I don't even think there. I played this thing for like four mana, maybe. Uh, next up, though. We got Sap Magic, also a bad spell. The only reason I think you should be playing this is if you are playing it as a Maokai champ spell. I thought this card was okay at first because I was like, yeah, what if I want to toss? There are better ways to toss stuff like Jettison. Uh, the heal is not insanely relevant. Burst speed is nice, I guess, but it's just not good enough. There's better ways to toss, in other words, and get deep or toss cards. So you don't have to play this card. So yeah, only you should only play this card if it's coming off of Maokai as a champ spell. Zero stars, in my opinion. Next, we got Sapling Toss. Uh, another bad card. We're just going and hitting all the bad cards now. Uh, sapling Toss is a 1-mana burst spell. Summon a Sapling next round. Again, the Saplings are 1-mana 2-1 Ephemeral Challengers. I don't think this is a constructed card. Uh, for Expedition, I think the card is okay, but even there, it's not that good. 
it's just not worth a whole card in my opinion like if you get this card for free somehow and you generate it somehow yeah the card is pretty nice like the card itself is okay like the effect is good but i don't want to use up a card slot for this ability so zero stars for me sorry your art's cute but you're only getting zero stars next up though we got terror of the tides now we got a good card Another sea monster, so Bilgewater likes this. Um, Terror of the Tides is an 8 mana, 6, 5 deep, so it becomes a 9, 8 when you're deep. Attack, give enemies minus 2, minus 0 this round, and your sea monsters have fearsome. This I see like a bright steel formation in that it is fairly meta dependent and you're only usually going to play one or two of these cards at most in the meta as a finisher. The guy asks for a lot. Terror is saying like, okay, you need to have a big board. You need to be like, like you need to have a board that you want to attack in with. Um, but because of the whole, like giving the sea monsters fearsome and the minus two minus so, basically the shrinking of your opponent's stuff, he comes down and he's probably, you're probably going to be able to just kill everything because good luck blocking every, all those sea monsters. So I like the card. I like it as a one of in C monster decks. That's pretty much it. I'm going to give it three stars though, because it is very powerful and it does win games compared to bright steel, who is nine mana, eight mana is obviously cheaper, much easier to cast. And I think it is slightly better than bright steel's effect. And plus it's a C monster. You can generate off of things like jaw hunters. So that's also pretty nice too. Uh, next up though, our last card, I believe for the entire set, we got, Thorny Toad. We're ending on kind of a low note here. Thorny Toad is a 2 mana 1 4. Last breath. Toss 2. Heal your Nexus by 2. Card has. I've seen the card go back and forth. Some people think the card is great. Some people think it is a trap and not that good. I kind of lean more towards the it's not that good camp. Um, it does sort of slow down aggro. Uh, the toss too is fine. Heal too. It's like doing a lot of stuff, but it's just not doing much in my opinion. I feel like eventually decks that play this card will stop playing it because more cards will come out. Better cards will come out that will just take this guy's spot. Uh, the only reason I think you should even play this in your deck is you're seeing a lot of aggressive decks and you just need to slow down your opponent. Because this combined with Dead Bloom Wanderer is pretty okay, but I'm not the biggest fan. Like the Toss 2 and the Heal, they're, they're not that reliable. It's like you can't actually, it's hard to control when you're getting that to go off. So not a fan. Plus it's only a 2-man 1-4 and it's kind of crappy in the late game. So yeah. Not too impressed by the Thorny Toad. It's playable, I think, in uh, Toss and Deep decks, but I'm not too impressed by it even in those decks. So only two stars from me. Sorry, Mr. Toad, but I don't know. I can't even say you're that cute. You're not that cute. Anyway, though, that is the last of the cards of the new set. We have gone through all the regions. I hope you all enjoyed watching me rate all of these cards. Uh, took a lot of time. Um, I hope, like I said, I hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, I've been having a lot of fun with the new set. I hope you're all having fun with the new set too. Hope you all learned something. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the video and the other ratings video, and if you haven't watched it, go watch the first part, uh, so you can see Bilgewater as well. Uh, but if you did enjoy it, uh, I would love it if you could leave a like or a comment down below. If you guys want to see more Rune Terra comment or content, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you also want to see more Rune Terra content, I stream over at Twitch TV slash Senaton pretty much every day, streaming some Rune Terra. Pretty fun time over there. We all go hang out, have a good time. Hope to see you there. Uh, with that all said and done, though, thank you all again once more for sitting here listening to me basically ramble about every single card and give my opinions on all these cards. Hope to see you again in a future video or perhaps over at my stream. Thank you all again once more for watching this video. I hope to see you again. Until then, uh, bye.